So the game of money isn't just about the external stuff, what to invest in, what kind of credit cards to use, how do you save and all that kind of stuff. It's also equally about how we think about it and how do we feel about the decisions that we made because it really affects how we experience life. So think about it this way. Imagine if two people made the exact same decisions, how they came to that decision, how they made it, and then how they lived with it after that can be completely different and that's led me to my very first episode of Inner Game, where I want to cover questions that we find difficult to grapple with internally. Thanks for listening for that extra long introduction this time. But for today, let's focus on the key question, which is how do we deal with financial loss? So I'll be getting a little personal today because I'll be sharing what happened to me. And then of course, talked about the struggles I faced. And after that, some tips that I can share with you of how I overcame some of those challenges or at least manage to tide myself through those difficult times. And if you're here for the very first time, hey, I'm Sun Min and welcome to Your Money Game, where we'll try and save and invest as well as feel better about money. So let me start with my three biggest financial losses. Now, despite the happy face that you see here, I've had my fair share of losses. My first major financial loss was in the stock market, and it wasn't a single big trading loss. It was really just an accumulation of a lot of things that ultimately led to one hole in my bank account. And this was 18 years ago. Oh, when I started in the markets, I started trading options. And then I moved on to stocks. And then for a short time, I was also trading futures. It was really just me trying and failing and trying and failing again. Because with each time that I failed, I lost money, right? No! So I need to make up money again to put it back into the markets. So that process kept repeating itself for years. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, I went nowhere. Well, to be more accurate, I actually went back a little bit because not only did I lose time, but I lost money as well, right? And in total, I lost about 20,000 ringgit. That works out to be slightly less than 7,000 sing dollars. The second loss I faced was really in one of my businesses. So in this business, I had a couple of partners and one partner was retiring and then migrating and with another partner, we had a few contracts with this group. And unfortunately, due to competition, all those contracts pretty much were lost to them. Hmm. While there wasn't an out-of-pocket really dramatic loss, nevertheless, seeing your revenues dry up by roughly 50-60%, that was really scary. So I've saved my major loss for last, so bonus time. So what happened was that when I was running my other business, I also had this one where I was doing Amazon FBA, which is basically selling products on Amazon US. I launched and sold four products with a total of seven variants in the matter of three years. But unfortunately, while the first one did well, the second not so much, the third and fourth kind of crashed on me. And the long story short is that I lost a total of about 150,000 ringgit. So roughly that works out to be about 50,000 sing dollars. So all those losses really hurt. Now if you wanted to help soothe some of my emotions, you could try clicking that like button because that really does help tell the gods of YouTube that this video is quite okay and it's worth sharing out to more people out there. Going through those financial losses really put me through quite a lot of different emotions and I picked out three of the major challenges that I face and hopefully you can relate to them. The first one was that feeling of being a failure. And I think this is something that you don't really have to suffer financial loss, but a lot of people can relate to that feeling of failure. There were many moments where I started to compare myself with other people and thinking like, hey, how come I didn't succeed and they did? That quickly evolved to feelings of self-pity. And yeah, it was just questions of like, why me? Why did this happen to me? Because I put in the hours, I put in the money, I put in the effort. And then of course, after more reflecting, you start to feel stupid, or at least I did. And it was really just looking at all those mistakes that I made and wondering like, oh my God, why didn't I see that coming? The next challenge was really the more practical worries where I was already pretty lucky that I didn't go into any bankruptcy. I still had food on the table and I really didn't have to starve myself. But then at the same time, I had all these goals. So with that huge hole in my bank account, the question was always like, how am I going to get back on track? The last challenge I wanted to share was this whole fear that paralyzes you. You know that whole deer in headlines thing? Uh, it's true, even though we don't really have a lot of deer here. When you're faced with that situation and you're still in it, and all that fear and emotion is clouding a decision that needs to be made, it's really difficult to act. 
It was all those type of emotions that felt that when I made the decision, it would be final. So a part of me was subconsciously thinking that, hey, maybe if I ignore it, uh, it'll go away. And that brings me to this last section where I want to share with you a few tips that got me through some of those really tough spots. The first tip that I want to share with you is a psychological one. And I think it's the most powerful one and it's the one that I use until today. And that tip is to practice the feeling of gratitude. And you might be saying like, what? Feel thankful for my loss? But jokes aside, it's really feeling thankful and feeling that gratitude for the things that you do have in your life. And oftentimes it's non-financial, right? It's really the people that you have, the conditions that you're in. The next tip is to look for something that snaps you out of your negative state. And I'm okay with being upset for a while and even maybe stewing in it for a little bit. But very quickly I realized that the more I sat in this negative state, the more miserable I was, the more difficult I was to be around and it really just affected everything I did. So for me personally, what works very well to snap me out of that negative state is that feeling of curiosity and wonder. And the action point is really simple for me to accomplish because all I need to do is to look for some kind of interesting learning that I'm just kind of curious about and I just follow my curiosity. The next tip is to take small steps and look for small wins. And the reason is that you've been like whacked over the head already, uh, things are hard, you don't want to suddenly go from being hurt to trying to climb a mountain, right? And right now, as you're picking yourself up, a lot of what could be normal decisions suddenly feel like really mountainous ones. So you want to kind of take baby steps, focus on what you can control, break big decisions down into smaller tasks. The next step is to budget more conservatively moving forward. If you're like me, the two steps that I took was to first cut out the fat in some of your lifestyle expenditures. Maybe a few downgrades here and there, maybe it's about cancelling a couple of subscriptions. The second one was that because at that point I had irregular income, the way I was budgeting was to use my last month's expenses as a way to budget for my this month's expenses. Now the final tip I want to share is a little bit of tough love. And it was really for me watching a lot of Gary V videos back in the day. And one of the things that really stood out for me until today is this saying that nobody owes you shit. Or to put it in more kosher terms, it really is that nobody owes you success. And while it might sound harsh, if you really sat on it and think about it, it's true. A lot of the angst that I was feeling honestly was due to my ego because I was rationalizing to myself saying that, hey, I put in all those hours, I put in all the effort, I think I'm a smart enough guy, and all those things collectively made me feel like I deserve the success. Yeah. I came to the realization that my job, or our job, you, me, is really just to make a good plan as best as possible, and on top of that, execute well. And if success is given to us, great, that's a, something to be celebrated. But if it's not, it's okay because we've tried our best and that's all we can do. So I hope you guys didn't mind me getting a little bit personal in this video. But at the same time, all those tips that I had were really just what helped me get through things. Now, I'm pretty sure that some of you will have your own. If you have any interesting ways of overcoming financial loss, please feel free to share it with me below in the comments. And of course, as with all of my videos, I hope you got some value out of it. And if you did, I would really appreciate your support. And if you could click that like, that subscribe button, and hey, I'll be back again next Sunday with a brand new video. And until then, you take care and keep playing your own game.